In this video, I'm going over um, the Mach 4 and Mach 5 questions. So Mach 4 is on polynomials and Mach 5 was on rational expressions. With um, the first part, um, here we are just simplifying our polynomials given function notation. So notice the first one, we are dividing. So I'm dividing by h of x, which is x minus 4, which means in this case, because x is by itself, it's got the coefficient and exponent of 1, we could use synthetic division for this problem. So I still have f of x, though, which is right here. So x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 6. So now I'm going to go ahead and set up my synthetic. Remember to change the sign. So this is now positive 4. Now, do we need zeros? Yes, because notice how we are missing both an x cubed and we're missing x. So we need not one, but we do need two zeros here. So I'm going to go ahead and now and put in the coefficient. So I need one for the x to the fourth, then zero, followed by eight, then another zero, then negative six. Now we can go through and start the process. But before, right, always bring down that first number. Now multiply below. Four times one is four and add above to get four. Four times four is 16, add to get 24. Four times 24, 96. When you add here, you get 96. Then last, four times 96 is 384. When you combine 384 minus six, you get 378, which is your remainder. So the final answer, because we started x to the fourth, this is one x cubed or x cubed plus four x squared plus 24x plus 96 plus our remainder, 378 over x minus 4. And so now notice in 1b how we are multiplying. Now we're multiplying g of x, which is 2x cubed here. So we're multiplying 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 5 by h of x, which is x minus 4. Now with multiplication, we don't need zeros. We're just going to go right into and set up the area model or um, box method. So now I need 3 by 2 because of the three terms. So 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 5 times x minus 4 here. Now we're going to go through and start um, simplifying. Um, and multiplying. So I've got now 2 but x to the fourth because x cubed times x. So now I've got x to the fourth. This means here I've got negative 11, but now x cubed, x squared times x. Then here that's just 5, so 5 times x is 5x. Now here 2 times negative 4, negative 8, x cubed. Negative 11 times negative 4, positive 44, x squared. Then 5 times negative 4, negative 20. Now let's see what like terms we have to combine. We do have one pair here because we have x cubed. So our final answer is the polynomial 2x to the fourth, negative 11 plus negative 8, negative 19, x cubed. Then plus 44x squared plus 5x minus 20. Make sure your answer is in standard form. Form. So the exponents are decreasing. The last one is subtraction. So we're subtracting g of x, which is our 2x cubed here. So 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 5. We are subtracting from that f of x, which is x to the fourth. So x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus Six. Now remember, when subtracting, we do need to distribute negative 1 here before we start combining like terms. So I'm going to combine with the 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 5, right? That was our g of x. We're going to combine it with negative x to the fourth, then negative or minus 8x squared. Now no longer minus 6, but now positive or plus 6. Then combine like terms. 
Well, here I only have the one x to the fourth term, but that's negative x to the fourth. Then I've got only one x cubed term here, so plus 2x cubed. Now we've got negative 11x squared minus 8x squared, negative 19x squared. We also have 5 plus 6. 5 plus 6 is 11, and that is your final polynomial. So now in part two, it's um, talking about a building a rectangular garden. So we have a rectangle. Um, and the width of the garden is represented by, so we have our function here for the width, and the length is represented by here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture. So we've got a rectangle, right? So we've got our rectangle for our um, garden um, in the backyard with a width of 4x squared minus 6x plus 8. Then we've got the length, which is x squared plus 4. So I'm going to use this picture here now. How much fencing will she need to go around the garden? So we're going around the garden, right? We're not filling in the garden with fencing. We're going around it. So that is perimeter, where we're going to add up the size which means if this side here, the width is 4x squared, then the side opposite is also 4x squared minus 6x plus 8. Then here, same thing. If I've got that length of x squared, then the other length as well is x squared plus 4. So now I can just start combining my like terms. So here I've got x squared, plus 4x squared, plus x squared, plus 4x squared, right? So that's 8, but plus 2 from x squared plus x squared, so that's 2. So here I've got 10x squared. So now I've got 10x squared. Next, our x term. Well, I've got negative 6 minus 6, which is negative 12x. No x term here, though, so negative 12x. Then last, we've got 8 plus 8, which is 16, and 4 plus 4, which is 8. So 16 plus our 8 here, which is 24. So plus 24. That is the polynomial that represents how much fencing we'll need to go around. Now, how do we explain what we did here? Well, why did we add up the sides? Why did we add them? Because this was a perimeter question. So this is a perimeter question. But why is this a perimeter question? Because we're going around or it's asking for the fencing. So notice how when you are explaining, don't just say, I added up the sides. Why did you add up the sides, right? Why did I add the sides? Yes, I added them, but why? Why did I combine like terms? Because this was a perimeter question. Well, why was this a perimeter question? Because the focus was fencing or going around, focusing on the outside of the garden. Now, 2B, how much space will fit inside the garden? So inside, so now we're filling all this inside here, which is the area, where area is just length times width. So again, here, I need to set up my box method, so my area model. So I've got my 3 by 2 here. I've got 4x squared minus 6x plus 8. Then x squared plus 4. That's what we're multiplying here. Now I go through and solve. So now this is 4, but x to the 4th. Remember to add the exponent. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Then negative 6, but now x times x squared is x cubed. Then here now I've got 8x squared. Then the bottom row here, 4 times 4 is 16x squared. Negative 6 times 4, negative 24x. Then 8 times 4, which is 32. Now combine like terms. Well, all we have are just the x squared terms here. So our Area, the polynomial that represents our area, is 4x to the 4th minus 6x cubed. 
then plus 24x squared minus 24x plus 32. So again, we need to solve but also explain. So don't just say that we multiplied, right? Why did you multiply? Because this is an area problem. But why is this an area problem? Because now it talked about how much can we fit inside. So again, notice how we're not just saying I multiplied. Why did you multiply? Because this was area. How do we know that this was area? Because it talks about how much space could fit inside of the garden. Then to C. He decides to change the width of the garden that is, oops, sorry about that, the width of the garden that is two X units more than and five units less than the original width. So we are focusing on the widths. All right, we're changing the width here. No matter what though, the question is asking, how much fencing will she need to go around? So again, we're gonna be doing perimeter, but it's not the same perimeter where we need to add up all of the sides, right? Because we're changing the width. Well, what was the width? Well, the width was 4x squared minus 6x plus eight. So our width originally was 4x squared minus 6x plus 8. Now, let's take a look at the changes. We need 2x units more than. So more, meaning we're adding 2x's. So I'm adding 2x's. Notice how I'm lining up like terms here. And then 5 units less than. So we're subtracting 5 now from the original. And I'm going to subtract five again, like terms. So now what is the new width? The new width is 4x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now we can find the perimeter, which again, our new dimensions of our rectangular garden, right, is 4x squared minus 4x plus 3. Then here, x squared plus four, the length stayed the same. We didn't change it. Now remember, because we're getting the perimeter, we need to double, right? So we are doubling each of the dimensions. So here I've got eight x squared, oops. So eight x squared minus eight x, but plus six. So what I did here was, again, I doubled, right? Because we are um, combining here. So then same thing here. I'm going to add to that, double your x squared plus four. So now I've got two x squared, but now plus eight from four plus four. And again, double it because you're getting the perimeter. Now we can combine our like terms. So eight x squared plus two x squared is again, 10x squared. There's no x term, so minus 8x, and then 6 plus 3. Oh, I'm sorry, that's an 8 there. Sorry about that. 6 plus 8, which is 14. This is the new polynomial that represents how much fencing. Now in part 3, it's talking about volume. Now keep in mind, volume is where you would multiply, right? The length times the width times the height. However, you are given the volume. It's represented by this polynomial here. Then the length is given as 2x. So here we have the length and the width is x minus three. What we are looking for is the height. So we're given the volume, but we're looking for the height. So this again is like we're working backwards, where what we're gonna have to do now is we're not gonna solve this by multiplication, right? Because you're given the volume, but we're looking for the height here. That means we need to divide by the length and the width. 
Now, you could solve this different ways, um, but here what I could do is, is I'm gonna go ahead and just take this apart and divide by the length of 2x. So I'm gonna set this up my volume, which is 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 36x, and then divide that by 2x. So now here I've got, well, two divided by two is one, so um, here, and then x cubed divided by x is now x squared. Then six divided by two is three, then x squared divided by x is now just one x. Then negative 36 divided by two is negative 18, and then x divided by x, so we're left with just negative 18. Now, this, again, is not our final answer because we still need to divide by the width, which here is the x minus 3. So I still now need to divide this value now by x minus 3. So I need to divide by both the length and the width, right? So according to our formula here. Now, because that x is by itself and we've got x minus 3, um, the coefficient and exponent are 1, we can use synthetic division. I'm gonna change my negative three value here to positive three. Now set up the coefficients. Do we need a zero? No, so I have one, then three, and negative 18. Now I'm going to bring down the first term and then multiply below. Three times one is three, add above. Three plus three is six. Three times six is 18. Here you get a remainder of zero. So the final answer is 1x plus 6, because remember here, right, we started with x squared. Or in this case, so what is the height? The height, h of x, is equal to 1x or x plus 6. So now, how could I explain this? Just make sure that you go through, well, what was the first thing here that we used? Well, I used my formula, right? So make sure that you mention how I've got volume, which is length times width times height. But in order to solve, because you're given the volume, we now need to not multiply, but we now need to divide according to our formula here. That's why we are dividing. But divide by both, not just the length, but the length and the width. So notice how as we're going through, you're talking about that division. Now you could also explain what did we use here. Well here, when we divided by the width, we used synthetic division. You could also explain why did we use synthetic division for this um, second time around when we divided by the width. There are other ways that you could solve this problem. This is just one way. But again, when you are explaining the setup in the process, make sure to talk about that. This is volume, which again, use that formula. And why are we dividing? So here, why are we dividing? Why did you use synthetic division? Because again, our x, the coefficient and exponent were both one. So keep in mind all of those explanations here. So now I'm going to go into Mach 5, which is the rational expression question. In part 1, the focus is just on calculations. So like here in 1a, you are multiplying. Well, remember when multiplying fractions, you literally just multiply straight across the numerators and denominators. No need for the denominators to be the same. So that means here, we're just going to factor and then simplify, cancel out. So in the numerator, can we factor? Absolutely, because there's a GCF of five. So I'm gonna take out five and I'm left with X plus five. From five divided by five, which is one, and 25 divided by five, which is five. And here I do have a trinomial where A is one. So what two numbers multiply to get nine and add to get three, oh, six, three and three. So that is your numerator, all multiplied together and factored out. So now in the denominator, can we factor here? Yes, because that's the difference of two perfect squares. So that is x plus 5 times x minus 5. Then can I factor 5x plus 15? Yes, because there's a GCF of 5. So when you take out 5, you're now left with x plus 3. 
from 5 divided by 5, which is 1, and 15 divided by 5, which is 3. Now we can start canceling out. I see I have x plus 5, and I have x plus 3. I also have 5 divided by 5, which is 1. So you are left with x plus 3 over x minus 5. Now, in 1b, we are adding. And in order to add, the denominators do have to be the same. But notice how I cannot factor, right? That's just x minus 2 and x minus 5. So that means that the common denominator is just multiplying them to each other. x minus 2 times x minus 5, which means in order to combine like terms, we're going to multiply x by, not by x minus 2, because we already have the factor x minus 2. So what's missing? The x minus 5. And then here we're going to multiply 3 by x minus 2. So now when you distribute x, you get x squared minus 5x. And here you're distributing positive 3, right? Because we're adding, so that here is 3x minus 6. Then, of course, combine like terms, which here we have the 2x terms. So this is x squared minus 2x minus 6 over x minus 2 times x minus 5. Then in 1c, we are actually solving an equation. So I notice that this here I could factor. Anytime that if I could see if there's any factoring, I'm going to go through before I start solving, I'm going to go ahead and factor. So what two numbers multiply to get negative 35 and add to get negative 2? Negative 7 and positive 5. And I've got divided by x plus 5, which is equal to 15. So now that I've factored that before I continue, remember when solving equations, Always look to see what are the extraneous. What can x not equal? So if I have x plus 5 in the denominator, which cannot equal 0, x cannot equal negative 5. So now let's go ahead and let's continue. Well, I notice here now if I were to simplify, x plus 5 cancels out. Now I solve x plus 7 is equal to 15. And now you're just solving for x, subtract 7, or what number plus 7 is equal to 15? 8. Now, is 8 our extraneous? No, negative 5 was. So x is equal to 8. Now in part 2, we've got multiple parts here, so we need to make sure to read the directions for each of those parts. Now, 2a, we are dividing. So we are dividing f of x, which is here, this rational expression, and we're dividing by, we're dividing by g of x. Now, remember, when dividing, we do need to keep the first fraction, change to multiplication, and flip the second fraction, get the reciprocal. So we're going to keep 7x minus 28 over 8x plus 32. But now we're going to multiply that now by what's now going to be in the numerator. x squared plus 13x plus 36 over 4x squared minus 16x. Now remember when multiplying, right, we just multiply our numerators across, denominators across. So we just go right into our factoring and then cancel out common factors. So can we factor 7x minus 28? Yes, because it has a GCF of 7. So when you take out 7 or factor that out, you end up with x minus 4. And here we do have our trinomial. So what two factors multiply to get 36 and add to get 13? 9 and 4. Now in the denominator, can we factor 8x plus 32? Yes, because there's a GCF of 8. Take that out and you're left with x plus 4. Now here... Um, we do have a GCF between in this binomial, but not just four, because notice how they also both have at least one X. So this is four X, then X minus four. Now we can start canceling out. Well, I see I have X minus four, and I have X plus four. Now here, you've got seven, but cannot be simplified by either eight or four. So here I've got 
seven times x plus nine over, well, simplify that. That's eight times four x. Well, eight times four x is 32 x. Then if you wanted to take it a step further, distribute seven. So now I've got seven x plus 63 over 32 x. Now in 2b, this is multiplication. So do we need to keep and change and then flip? No, we are just now going to multiply. So again, 7x minus 28 over 8x plus 32. But we're gonna multiply that by, keep it. So 4x squared minus 16x over x squared plus 13x plus 36. Then just like before, we're going to factor. Now keep in mind, we've already factored. However, we have seven times x minus four, but now we have four x in our numerator, and then x minus four. In the denominator, you still have eight times x plus four from that first binomial. But now we have the trinomial still in the denominator, so here I've got x plus four times x plus nine. So now as I go through, is there anything that can be canceled out? Really, the only thing truly that can be canceled out because this is two x minus fours, but here we have two x plus four, so those cannot cancel out. But I do have four over eight. So if I have four over eight, four over eight is one half. So this can now become one x or just x over two. So that's the only area that can be simplified. Now 2c is asking what x values make g of x undefined. So if g of x here, which is, so our four x squared minus 16 x over x squared plus 13 x plus 36. Now remember, we're looking for what values um, x values make this undefined. What are the extraneous? So remember when undefined, we focus only on the denominator because the denominator cannot equal zero. So I'm not even worried about the numerator here. We've already factored this. So we know that this is x plus four times x plus nine, which cannot equal zero. That means the two values that make this undefined our x cannot equal negative four and negative nine. So now in 2D, you are explaining both, make sure to explain both, the similarities, what they have in common, as well as differences. How are they different between 2A and 2B? Well, 2A was division and 2B was multiplication. Don't just leave it there, right? So what are similarities? Well, technically, we still had to, um, our process was the same, right? Because if you think about it, we still had to factor and then cancel out. So like, for example, the process is the same. So that is a similarity, the process, where we had to factor and cancel out. However, what are, what was the big difference? Well, the big difference was the fact that with 2a, because it was division, what did you have to do? So 2a, because it was division, right? What did you have to do? Keep the first fraction, change to multiplication, and flip the second fraction, or get, if you want to even be more mathematical, we are multiplying by the reciprocal. So when multiplying by the reciprocal in 2a versus 2b, we just went right into that process, which is what they had in common, where we factor and then cancel out common factors. Now in part three, you are um, given that this person here, Owen, was given um, this problem here to solve where we are subtracting, right? So we're subtracting two rational expressions. His work is below. Did he solve the problem correctly? So again, 
if you need to underline to make sure that you identify all the parts that you need to answer because if not we need to identify and explain the error that he made but if we do agree that he solved it correctly we need to explain why owen was correct and make sure to again use math vocabulary so again i'm going to set this up because the practice here is to solve and then compare your work as you're going to see what is the difference. Now I notice here, because subtraction, just like addition, the denominators have to be the same when subtracting two fractions, but I can factor this denominator here. I can factor that into x plus six times x minus five, because they multiply to get negative 30 and add to get positive one. So that means here, if I can factor this to x plus six times x minus five, and this fraction here, the second fraction only has x minus five. That means I have to multiply two or negative two, right? By x plus six, because that is the factor that is missing. So we're gonna multiply by x plus six, which here, the first step is correct. They multiply by x plus six. So now I'm gonna go through here and I've got nine minus four x, right? Over our denominator, x plus six times x minus five, minus then two times the x plus six times x plus six times x minus five. Now, no worries on the fact that it got switched here, how they have it written, because remember, commutative property tells us you're gonna get the same answer. So it's okay if it's switched, but does it match? Yes. So we're good on that. So now let's go through, but keep in mind, you are distributing a negative two here, right? Or you're multiplying by two, but then distributing a negative, right? Because we're subtracting. So this becomes nine minus four X, but then now minus two X minus 12 here over our X plus six times x minus five, which gives you when combining like terms. That is a negative six x minus three from nine minus 12 over x plus six times x minus five. So now notice clearly we got a different answer, right? We combined our like terms, but it's right here because they combined and did, he did, how did he get negative six X? Well, he combined negative two minus two X, which is negative six X, but then did nine plus 12, which is 21. So what error did Owen make? We need to identify it because he combined like terms correctly, but he did not distribute the negative because it was supposed to be negative 12. And that's what you need to explain. So Owen, first off, we have to say if he's correct or incorrect, right? Owen is incorrect, right? He's wrong. Why? Because what did he do wrong? He distributed, he um, did not distribute, right? So he did not distribute the negative. Both terms. Because if you think about it, right? He distributed the negative to the 2x, but not to positive 12. So he had positive 12 when it was supposed to be negative 12, right? And again, then make sure, right? So he did not distribute the negative. And again, why do we need to distribute a negative? Because we're subtracting. So notice how you are constantly using the word because. You are using, if you're identifying if he's right or wrong. Um, that he distributes, so distributing a negative to terms where it was supposed to be a positive 12 value and not um, supposed to be a negative 12 value and not positive 12. So the final answer was supposed to be right here, negative 6x minus 3. That is supposed to be the final answer. So again, just make sure that you're identifying but also explaining. He's incorrect. Why? Why was he supposed to distribute the negative? What was he supposed to distribute the negative to and end up getting? So make sure you always have those explanations.